Wayne Rainey was having the time of his life on the racetracks. He was born for it. What he didn't realize was that on the next corner, on that day of the 1993 Italian Grand Prix, he would never be able to race a motorcycle again. Wayne Rainey was a famous American racer known for his smooth and calculated riding style. He kicked off his motorcycle racing career in style and won the 500cc World Championship three times. Did you know that his arch rival was Kevin Schwantz? A rivalry so crazy to the extreme that it would go on for years. We'll cover more on the pair as we go through the video. Wayne achieved great wins in his career. His American fans loved him. His ability and hunger to win led him to push even harder. And that's what these riders do. They love this sport and they know the dangers involved. Wayne's racing days ended suddenly, which we'll get into later about that fateful day that ended his career. But first, here's a glimpse for you MotoGP fans on the life and career of an American road racing legend. Wayne Wesley Rainey was born on October 23, 1960, and is well known as a former American Grand Prix motorcycle road racer. He had a smooth and calculated riding style and top-of-the-edge rivalry with Kevin Schwantz, ranging from 1987 to 1993. It would not be surprising that he would rise to be one of America's greatest riders. Let's take a look at how he did it. He started his racing career in the AMA Grand National Championship, which was a series consisting of four dirt tracks and road races. He finished the championship season in 15th position in 1981 on the dirt tracks. His success in the novice 250cc class impressed Kawasaki, and they hired him for the 1982 AMA Superbike Championship to defend Eddie Lawson, who was the national champion at the time. After Lawson changed to the Grand Prix circuit, he was left to take over as a leader and earned the national championship for Kawasaki in 1983. He agreed to ride for the Yamaha Racing Team in 1984 at the Grand Prix World Championship. The first season was not as successful as he hoped, as he only got a single podium standing and had a hard time pushing the bike to start. After the results, he decided to go back home and join the McLen Racing Team in 1989. The team was US-based and participated in the 250cc Formula 1 classes. Wayne raced for Honda from 1986 to 1987 for both superbikes and F1. Most racers have their rivals, and Wayne was just about to meet his. During the Superbike National Championship in 1987, he had a flaming rivalry with Kevin Schwantz as they competed for the title. Wayne won the competition, but that was not the end of their rivalry. It continued on in 1987 as they were competing for the Transatlantic Trophy, but as teammates versus British riders. Wayne was finally put in a position where he had to work together with his rival, and they worked out the best way they could. Wayne came back to Europe in 1988 and joined Team Robert's Yamaha, but for the 500cc class this time around, while riding the YZR500. His arch-rival Schwantz also followed him to Europe and signed for the 500cc class, but for Team Suzuki. It would seem like they would do anything to be each other on the racetrack. The rivalry continued further on the racetracks as they drove each other to crazy levels of competitiveness. Wayne finally had his first win in 1988 after completing the British Grand Prix. He was on fire, and between 1990 to 1992, he claimed three 500cc championships for Yamaha consecutively. Wayne Rainey certainly seemed to have it all going for him. And yes, that lingering question in your mind about what happened to him, we'll cover now. Wayne was still with Yamaha in 1993 and he knew that he needed to do better with Yamaha to get to the same level as Honda. But the Japanese bike disappointed him because it was underpowered and had terrible handling. The Australian season started, and Wayne claimed a couple of victories in Japan and Malaysia, and had Schwantz fall behind him. He had even more podium finishes in the next round. When he got to Germany, things went south during the round with bike deficiencies that could not be masked, and Rainey couldn't do any better than fifth position. Rainey tried to redeem himself in Catalonia during round 8, where he beat Schwantz. The corners were perfect, allowing him to use less speed but still move as fast and have his third win for the year in San Marino. He still finished behind Duan and Schwantz in the points, which gave Suzuki the advantage. Wayne would then come in second place at Donington Park after Schwantz injured his wrist. He'd always liked the Misano circuit, so he set his goals that day to earn as many points as he could. Wayne was in front from the start, but as he was on his 10th lap, he pitched his Yamaha too fast into a turn. 
The mistake didn't seem serious at first. He was pushing that day as hard as he could to widen the gap from his competitor Schwantz, but he accelerated a little too fast on the exit, and the bike moved out of line at speeds over 120 miles an hour. The bike did not high side him, but rather brought him back to the line with rage. The Wayne fell to the ground and slid very fast into the gravel, which had been raked as a protection measure for stopping cars, but certainly not for less protected motorcycle riders. Wayne fell on the gravel so hard and did a couple of somersaults, then slammed continuously into the rutted gravel before coming to rest. His bike also appeared to have hit him on a CCTV video replay. His spine was severely damaged midway down his back, and there was no way he could recover from such an accident. He was in the hospital for a very long time, before the bones in his back were finally repaired and corrected, but unfortunately, there was nothing that could be done about his severed spinal cord. All his fans could not believe it, and this was the sad and tragic end of an era for him. It could have happened to anyone, and not just Wayne. Motorbike racers all know too well the dangers that are involved, but this sport is in their veins and they just have to race regardless. Wayne turned to Frank Williams, the founder of Williams F1 Racing and a quadriplegic himself for advice, and he later became the Marlborough Yamaha manager for two years. Kevin Schwantz left the Grand Prix circuit after the 1995 season because of injuries. Part of the reason was he had lost his competitive spirit, because his arch rival was no longer able to get back on the racetracks. Wayne was not going to let his condition put him down. He raced a hand-controlled supercar in the Northern California Supercar Series. He stayed in Monterey, California, close to WeatherTech Raceway Seca. Wayne's popularity and excellent performance finally earned him something else, if not a trophy. His name would be part of a landmark, and he would see it every day if he wanted. The closed circuit named the corner to honor him, Rainy Curve. Wayne finally made it to the Hall of Fame in 1999, and the FIM labeled him a Grand Prix legend in 2000. In 2007, he got his place in the International Motorsports Hall of Fame, and in 2003, he was a subject on a documentary film focusing on motorcycle racing. Even after he left the racetracks, Wayne was still an honored bike racer, allowing him to receive two of the greatest awards all racers hope to achieve in their life. Roll on 2022, and Wayne Rainey hadn't had his final motorbike ride yet. He was finally back on the Yamaha after 29 years since his tragic accident. Wayne would be riding at the Goodwood Festival, and it was expected that his return would revive a collection of memories. Though the most important news was that he would be back for his debut while riding the Yamaha YRZ500, a specifically modified bike to suit his needs for the event. This would not be the first time Wayne was getting back on a bike. He mentioned he was excited to be attending the event and couldn't have been happier. At the end of it all, Wayne realized that he would like to leave the tracks completely and be around his wife more often, which for him was all he needed. The times may change, but his name and achievements will never be forgotten. A Hall of Fame and multiple championship winner. How Wayne is holding on. Wayne was a wheelchair user after his accident and had to learn to live that way. A lingering question that many people want answered, but might be afraid to ask, is what Wayne has to say about his condition. You would expect him to be all run down with emotions of endless regret, but Wayne surprised everyone when he said he was happy that he had stopped racing, even though racing was his life. Several years have passed since his accident, and it's an accident that will always stick in the mind of Wayne, and for many of his colleagues and fans. He must have gone through what happened in the afternoon countless times, so he could comfortably talk about it. When he talks about that day, he often goes through a range of emotions, which is what anyone would expect. Still, Wayne has learned to accept his condition and lives a fulfilling life. He is grateful that all it cost him was his mobility. Here are some interesting things about Wayne Rainey. Wayne is remembered for winning the championship trophy not twice, but three times. What made him achieve such results was his strong will and the fact he was always calculating his moves. Rainey won his first MotoGP race in 1988 in the 500cc MotoGP World Championship. This was the start of a dominating era for him. Many experts regard this time as the golden era of the sport. Wayne got his love of fast machines from his father, who also loved fast machines. Wayne has also won multiple AMA Superbike Championships. Wayne was identified for his smooth, calculated riding style on the racetracks, and was most recognized on race days where he stood out from his competitors. Personal life When he's not on the tracks, who is Wayne Rainey? Wayne was loved by his fans both on and off track. His parents are Sani Rainey and Ela Rainey. 
He was one of three children his parents had. His father worked in construction and was a go-kart enthusiast. Wayne currently lives with his wife Shay and son Rex in California. The son graduated from Pepperdine University and is employed by CBS Television Distribution. His net worth today is estimated to be $1.5 million, all from his racing career. Without the tragic accident years ago, Wayne would have made significantly more, but his time was cut short. Wayne's star sign is Scorpio. What happened to Wayne was something he couldn't avoid, but it certainly did not stop him from trying to get back to doing what he loved. Wayne lived for racing. It was part of his identity. Be sure to check out Moto Plus for more fantastic videos. See you there!